Let's go over to our guest. Our guest today, folks, is Kelly Lawrence. Kelly is the CEO of Onyx Plus East. Now, the website, folks, is honestandeast.com. Kelly, welcome to TFNN. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, the bottom line is that we're in the public markets, Kelly, and it's, it's so cool having you on because I know you do a huge amount of business in Indiana as well as Florida. Is that correct? We do. We do. We're very active um, in the Indianapolis metro area, area and uh, Tampa and St. Pete markets as well, looking to grow into additional markets over the next year. And so uh, with... I'm quite familiar with them folks in the St. Pete, in, in the St. Pete market. Uh, so tell us, number one, the, the bottom line, you, you come into cities, you, you like building housing that you can basically walk around the city. Tell us what the challenges are and what the great things are about the housing business right now. Sure. So, yeah, we are, as Onyx and East, we're very focused on building in uh, walkable infill locations, you know, vibrant communities. Um, it can be around parks, retail, restaurants, employment centers, but really focusing on that lifestyle of walkability and connectivity. Um, and you know, being in the infill, and often that means in an urban location, it, there are a lot of challenges with that type of development. Um, often you're assembling uh, many parcels, smaller parcels versus suburban development, you know, where it might be a large undeveloped uh, site. Also, just uh, in a redevelopment situation, you encounter unique situations with past uses on a property, um, things of that nature. So it's uh, it can be definitely more challenging, but it's also can be uh, really fun and rewarding um, to see kind of vacant and sometimes abandoned property, not necessarily the case here, um, but often, you know, be redeveloped into um, something that we hope adds to the community that, that we're building in. Yes, and, and as Kelly explained that, folks, it certainly does. So an infill, as, as she explained, is totally different than a track land. You know, whether it's the Lanaz or the Toll Brothers folks, that's a track land deal. Uh, what Kelly's talking about, which is really cool, is coming inside of the city. What, what an infill is, is that you're finding the lots, and the skill set there, Kelly, is totally different, isn't it, that w when you're doing a, an infill? It is. It's really unique challenges. Um, you know, our sites, we really don't do cookie cutter development, um, given the unique nature of the land that we're buying. Um, we have to get very creative in our land planning. Um, and again, you just have more complexities, be it with kind of urban development districts or oftentimes we're in historic neighborhoods. Um, and, and again, working with um, surrounding often, you know, op operating businesses, homeowners, active neighborhoods, um, and again, you're, you're redeveloping something that could have been industrial, it could have been commercial, um, you know, so yeah, there's lots of complexities added to, you know, being an infill developer. So t tell me, in, in St. Pete right now, they have two beautiful developments in St. Pete, folks, and if you're on our website, you can just get that link. It's onyxandeast.com. I, one of them, you know, the, the townhouse development, like, sold out immediately, right? So, I, I, I mean, I know, you know, you've been in this business a long time. You've seen the ups and downs. So, you have, you have two nice projects here. Tell mm -hmm. me, like, when you, start, when you first start in one of these, okay, the differential between the buyer of the townhouse and the buyer of the, basically the apartments. How, how do, what do you see happening out here right now? Um, you know, I don't know that there's necessarily a different profile. We're just seeing um, many different demographic groups being drawn to, again, these, these walkable locations um, and being able to have new construction um, and the, the benefits that go along with new construction, just, you know, brand new finishes, energy efficiency, things of that nature um, drawn to these communities. But yes, the, the demand has been um, far more than we we ever project uh, for these communities. We sold out our six point row community at First Avenue North and 26th Street um, before we've delivered a home. So we're actually delivering the first homes there, um, hopefully uh, fairly soon and closing that community out um, towards the end of the year, beginning of 2022. Um, and, and we're anxious to get Alante started on 15th Street, um, hoping to break ground there in July and, and really launch our sales effort uh, early fall around Labor Day, likely. So when we, you know, we 
well, we feel, I, I feel myself, that we have inflation that's starting to catch hold right now, right? What does a developer like you do? Okay, so let's th let's talk about Alante, okay? Because this is the really cool, folks. Okay, she is just starting a whole another project. Bottom line is that I can come in there and, and buy this right now, you know, and, and next year have it. It's like, okay, how do you protect yourself if, in fact, we're in an inflationary era? I'm sorry, you broke up on me there, that, Tom. That's fine. That? How how does a home builder? protect themselves right meaning that you, you know let's say we, you're going to pre-sell these units right how do you protect yourself if we have an environment like lumber hit uh, 13 something today and then it went limit down okay how do you protect yourself meaning that you're going to buy all these supplies that seem the raw supplies seem to be going up inside the home building business well, they absolutely do, and that's why we're going to break ground and get through a bit of our site work before we release sales so we can really see where some I of those see. commodity markets are going to shake out um, because it is this, this is an unprecedented time uh, relative to those rising costs in our industry and just overall supply chain disruption. Um, so, you know, we, that's part of why we are, we're holding off releasing sales just to, uh, just to watch what happens in that regard. Um, but, you know, part of it is just having really good relationships with your trade partners and, and subcontractors um, and, you know, help, helping to manage that, that risk that we take as developers and builders in this, this time. And, and when you look, let, let, I know you do a lot of business in what, Indiana and Florida, right? It's we are. And I'm sure that, you know, you have a lot of connections around the rest of the country. Talk to me about the aspect. I mean, it seems that, you know, I've seen three good cycles. This is kind of intriguing. Like, the real question is, is that are we at the beginning of the cycle, the middle of the cycle? I don't think we're at the end, but what do you think? I, I really think we're at the beginning to maybe towards the middle, but I think we have a long way to go. Um, you know, I think it, there's been, I think even a recent Wall Street Journal call, Journal article this week talking about a $4 million um, housing unit deficit right now and you know I've seen several other articles that are right in that same bandwidth that we are just so undersupplied um, really over the last 10 years in housing and now with Millennials choosing to buy homes I mean that's just a huge demographic shift into home ownership um, and so a, a lot of household formation we're undersupplied in housing we've been undersupplied for several years you now have the construction costs um, really hampering supply. Um, I think I think the end user lending is not what it was back in the last cycle. Right. So that's also 